Hey everybody, this is Claire and this is Small Joyful Things. As always, I go to thrift stores or I go to estate sales or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist and I'm always looking for things that I find interesting or that I think you would find interesting or things that I just, <laughs> I, I, I find them pleasing and I want to, to show them off. Um, I try to find out as much as I can about them and then I tell you guys about them. And I've got something cool today. So what I have here is this very, very nice porcelain dish. It is tiny. We've got a stamp in the back and I'll get to that in a minute. It is all hand painted. Um, unfortunately, some of the gilding has rubbed off, which is very unfortunate. Um, I think there's also been a little bit of damage to the pattern in the middle there. Otherwise, all the decoration is all hand painted, except for this pattern here, which I think has been just kind of stamped on. Uh, it is very, very fine porcelain. It's incredibly light, very thin. I don't think it's quite, well, you might call it paper porcelain, but I don't think you can actually completely see through it. Yeah. Let's just measure it up real fast. It is just about six inches across and five and a half inches about the handles. And let's say about one and a, one and a quarter inches high. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bowl. I suppose you'd call this a, you'd probably call this like a candy dish or a trinket dish or something like that. So I bought this in a thrift store for a dollar <laughs> and I basically bought it because I saw the mark at the back and I just looked at the actual thing itself and I thought, finally, finally, I found a piece of authentic Nippon uh, antique porcelain. Fantastic. It's about time. <laughs> So obviously I had, to, I had to actually get it. So first of all, what is it? It is Japanese. Um, I'll explain more about why it actually, why it actually says that you can see the mark says hand painted Nippon. Um, it has these very nice concentric circles that for whatever reason, I just kind of associate with Japanese porcelain at this point. Not entirely sure why. I don't think I just see it on any, on any others. But anyway, so on the dish itself, apart from the actual, the rim here, you, know, you can see that the the gold has just slightly rubbed off. It would have originally been a line there and it would have been picked up there as well. Now, the really interesting part, obviously, is the, the pattern. This is all hand painted, all these beautiful, delicate little details. And you can see that the lines here are all hand painted as well. And these lovely pastel colours, they're all painted in, all the little flower details are all done. And obviously my big finger is getting in the way there. <laughs> now, you can see as well, these lovely little delicate little roses and then I think there's maybe that that's intentional but there is probably a tiny little bit of damage there. Uh, I'll try and get another better look there. I, mean, I really am just kind of surprised by just how, how very tiny and delicate it is. A little bit of dust. All of the lines of the little the little rose thorns all done entirely by hand. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And in fantastic condition as well, considering its age, this is going to be, by the way, at least 100 years old. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more, at least 100 years old. So, see there, if I can get this to focus, there we go. Hand-painted Nippon. And the stamp is unusually clear, which is great for us. Fantastic, I have to say. Because when you're actually talking about Nippon porcelain, oh boy, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So, so let's let's see where we're at. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, right, is that, first of all, <laughs> there is a whole thing here that we got to talk about because it's possible for stuff to actually be faked. <laughs> um, so Real or Repro or whatever has a lot more information about this. But the long and short of it is that back in back in the day, like in, in 1891, uh, the McKinley Tariff Act came in in the US and basically said that any kind of goods that were being imported from outside the US for, for obviously for sale within within America, they had to be marked with their country of origin in English. And the basically Japanese porcelain makers took that to mean, oh, OK, we're just going to mark it hand painted Nippon. Nippon being the name of Japan in Japanese. It's called Nippon. Um, now, that that kind of lasted up until 1921. And again, there's more information here if you're really curious about it, where effectively the US government looked around and said, hang on, hang on a second, Nippon is a Japanese word. You've got to say it's made in Japan. And from that point on, now you have Japan marked on pieces of, of Japanese porcelain coming into the US for sale. 
But the nice thing about this is that we can actually really accurately kind of date this little ball because we know, obviously, it's marked Nippon and it should be after 1891 before 1921. But can we do actually any better than that? It turns out we actually can. So there's there's a few, there's more reference here I'm going to actually provide. Um, we have this this very nice WordPress blog. Someone's actually gone to the trouble of picking up a lot, basically giving us all of these photo references for Nippon backstamps and known dates of manufacture. This is fabulous. This is this is uh, very useful for our purposes. Now again, they obviously say we are not experts, but we're looking for. We always try to work for a book by someone who has far information. And this reference, Joan van Patten. This book, I will probably have to get a copy of this at some point. <laughs> The ABCs of Collecting Nippon Porcelain in Hardcover. Not a bad price. You should see the prices I pay for some of the last books. But anyway, what have we got to say about this particular back stamp? Like this stamp in particular. Well, it turns out we do have a reference. There we go. The Rising Sun Nippon. We've only encountered this in blue, as shown. And the mark has been used since 1911. And it's obviously, it's listed in Van Patten's book. And that is absolutely lovely because it means that now we can date this bowl to within 10 years 1911 to 1921 fantastic we have a date <laughs> that's that's pretty good that basically confirms that this is actually 100 years old now apart from that what about the fake stuff because you know i wouldn't be showing you realrepro.com if there wasn't fakes to talk about and it turns out there is since the mid 90s, there have been a wide number of faked Nippon marks appearing on new porcelain, essentially because the market for Nippon porcelain used to be phenomenal, such that I'd actually heard of it before I got into kind of this this kind of vintage hobby. And yeah, they, people obviously used to fake it. When something gets valuable enough, people will try to copy it to make more of it to sell it. <laughs> yeah. So scroll down a bit we're going to get to the actual marks themselves this is a sample of the new nippon marks all copied from genuine and pre-1921 marks and this is going to be worrying because you see that that maybe looks a bit like that never fear however real repo's got our back and if we scroll down a bit more we do the new rising sun mark the semicircle of the sun is shown in outline hollow and razor straight lines and we see here the original rising sun mark, solid rays extend from the solid body of the sun. You can see that they're in a, an actual fan as opposed to being rather straight. But that is what we have here. You can see, that even though the bit of it, the end of it there is a little bit worn, that is this mark. Uh, like that's it there from the picture. And if it focus it, there we go. And that's it there on our little bowl. Which is which is great. That gives that gives us something to go on. That basically suggests to us that okay, what you've got is it actually is actually the real thing. And I should probably say as well, we should not only rely on marks. I think marks are helpful, but they should actually it should actually be able to look at the piece itself and be able to determine whether or not it's the real thing or not. And in this case, I really do believe it is the real thing, simply because it's got wear on it, especially around the rim and everything, that would be consistent with something that's about hundred years old. Um, it is just kind of imperfect in ways that I would consider to be correct, if I don't know if that makes sense. I, I, I very much do believe that this is actually the real thing based on the mark, based on like the like the feel of the base and everything. The fact that that, that, that kind of, I think older Japanese porcelain always has a kind of a, a bit of like an extra raised edge on the base. I've noticed it a lot when I've seen pictures and anything, so make it out what you will. But definitely looking at it here and just and seeing the rim and seeing the wear, like this does seem like a piece that is that old. So really, really happy about that because it means that I get to, here you go, I've got a hundred years, I've got a bowl here. It's a hundred years old. It's still in pretty good condition. You could use it for candy today. How nice is that? Anyway, I'm going to be leaving some links down in the description if you want to read up a little bit more about Nippon backstamps. I'll bring the listing here and the article from Reader Repo about how to actually basically take a look at the, the stamps so at least you won't be caught up by any obvious fakes so here we have it um the last thing i should probably talk about is basically what is it worth um right now as far as i can tell the market for nippon is still incredibly strong there are lots of sold listings on ebay you know people are still really interested in really old antique fine porcelain especially something that has been clearly well made um i bought this for one dollar canadian 
I would say I'll probably be able to sell it for maybe 10 to 15 dollars US plus the shipping on top of that. It's definitely worth my money. Um, if you see it kind of for the same in a thrift store, uh, you know, maybe hold off. Don't if it goes above like five dollars per piece, then maybe you know, maybe maybe pass on that, because I'm not. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be hundred percent sure being able to get your money back. But at a dollar, I thought, yeah, definitely, definitely, I'll be able to sell that. So I'm so happy that I found it and I finally got a chance to actually talk about nip on porcelain. So this is my small joyful thing for the day. I hope you guys like it as well. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.